next frontier of virtual business networking isn't digital networks like DIN, like LinkedIn, but ways to connect even virtually, but face to face. Startup Lunch Club uses AI to match people for one on one meetings. It's raised $24 million in September at a $100 million valuation. Now, it started with in person meetings back in 2018, but when it pivoted to virtual only meetings during the pandemic, growth skyrocketed by 15 times in the past year, and it's now facilitated more than 1 million connections. And now it's offering the option of in person meetings again as well. There are other business networking tools. Shaper Networking allows you to swipe, yes, just like Tinder, to meet people with shared business interests. Glimpse enables companies to connect employees with video chats to help build community internally. And there's Bumble Biz and Lightspeed partner Nicole Quinn, who invested in Lunch Club. She tells us she sees networking on Clubhouse happening as well. Over the last 16 months, Habits have been built up that will be sticky after this pandemic. And so really, if you think about it, digital networking will be something that stays around afterwards. Um, and it has been an inflection point for people who maybe wouldn't have tried networking otherwise. VZ's invested $91 million in business networking companies last year and have invested almost as much so far this year, according to PitchBook. An even bigger adjacent business is virtual events. One company in the space, Hopin, is valued at $5.5 billion, and investment in this category skyrocketed to over half a billion dollars last year. It's already nearly reached that same amount this year. So, Kelly, certainly a space to watch. And, Julia, it's good we're talking about this today as we're, again, reflecting on what the future of work will look like, some of these tools can actually replace those kind of serendipitous uh, office encounters, right? Some are meant kind of for um, bringing people together who might already be working for the same company. Others, obviously, introducing you with people with shared interests. So it's not just, you know, Tinder that, that could be a matchmaking tool. I, my only question for a lot of this is if you look at innovation and how quickly big tech copies it. You know, Facebook just launches audio rooms, for example. Um, what keeps them from offering these features as a way to keep people on their platforms? Well, look, we've seen Facebook introduce so many tools. Facebook does have a dating service. But then you also have a company like Bumble, which is primarily a dating service, but then also has a business matching service to help match people with similar interests. I think this is a space, Kelly, where we're going to see a plethora of options, whether it's targeting tools to help companies generate more connections internally, even if people aren't necessarily in the office at the same time, or more tools for people to meet business contacts, even if they're not even in the same city. So I think digital, um, we've seen a digital acceleration because of the pandemic, and I don't think that's going to slow down or stop even as people go back to meeting people in lunch for lunch in person. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.